Imagine a room full of 23 people and you asked each of them their birthday. What do you think the odds that any of them have the same birthday are? Well, as probability would have it, it's surprisingly around 50%. Sounds kind of crazy, right? Well, this is known as the veridical paradox, something that seems counterintuitive, but is in fact true. Well, how about we code this problem ourselves and test it and see what we get? Let's first create a birthday problem class. I've already created the project, so let's get on with coding. In the class, let's instantiate a couple of fields for random and the number of days in a year. We don't need to use the actual days and months of the year, which we could, but instead we can just use the numbers one through 365 to denote the days of the year to make this much simpler. We aren't gonna worry about a leap year either because it won't make much of a difference at all using just another day. So let's create the main method that will take in two parameters, one for the number of birthdays or people, and another for the number of trials we will use. So we're going to iterate over the number of trials. and Each time, we get a different list of randomly generated birthdays to use. Every time there's a duplicate, we want to add one to the success counter because this is what we're checking for. I know we haven't created some of these methods yet, but we're about to. This is the get random birthdays method that will randomly generate days of the year and take in a parameter to denote how many people or birthdays will be used to help with this probability. So if the argument is 23, then we're gonna randomly generate 23 days of the year. This next method is what's actually gonna return true or false if there are duplicates or not. In order to actually check for the duplicate, we can use a one line piece of code using streams, which were introduced in Java 8. You can certainly use two for loops as a brute force method, and that'll work, but your time collection is gonna be n squared, which isn't great. But if you're just starting out uh, with coding or understanding loops, then by all means, use nested loops so that you can see exactly what's going on and it'll make more sense to you. Again, we're just testing. This isn't about how well you can code, so please don't judge me. So with this stream, the all match method is also what's called a short circuit method. So the first time it's this, this tries to find a match and it's successful, it will stop iterating through the rest of the list. Some other methods that use with the stream, such as distinct and count, will go through the whole list, which is fine, but we can make this a little bit better that the first time it finds a match, it stops iterating through the list. So what this piece of code is saying is, if it can't find, or if it can't add an element from list of birthdays to the hash set, then return true. Because remember, hash set cannot have duplicates. So if it gets to a number that already exists and it tries to add it, it won't be able to. And so then it's going to return true. It would have returned false if we didn't put the exclamation in front switching the Boolean expression. This last method is a simple print statement of the probability. Now let's test it. So let's start out with 10. 10 this is the number of birthdays. So we have 10 birthdays that are randomly generated. And as you can see here, most of these are around upper, upper 11%. We have one at 12.41%. So this is pretty close to what it should be, which is 11.7%. And we can do it again. And as you can see, most of these are hovering right around the mid to upper 11%. Now with 20, uh, we're supposed to get 41.1%. Uh, and as you can see here, we're pretty close. Uh, here I'm doing 20,000 trials just to get an even more accurate representation of the probability with our tests. So this seems to be pretty good. Now for the original question that I asked in the very beginning, here's 23. When we run this, we do get just over 50%. The actual probability calls for 50.7%. And again, I said it didn't matter about the leap year. If we added a leap year, then the probability expected is 50.6%. So it's negligible, okay? So this is actually a good probability. So it seems that our test is accurately representing the probability of 23 people in a room just over 50%, or there's a 50% probability that at least two people are going to have the same birthday. Here, I'm going to have 30 different birthdays. And again, I'm gonna be using the 20,000 trial just to get a better representation. These are about between seven, we have 70.195 is the lowest, and then 70.67 is the highest, and we're expecting 70.6%.
Now, if we just add 10 more birthdays, we're expected through probability equations to get 89.1%. And as you can see here, when we execute our code with 20,000 trials, we are getting between upper 88% to lower 89%. And that's a pretty accurate representation. So we're getting what we are expecting. And so let's add just 10 more people. Now we have 50. And as you can see here, we're expecting 97% and we are getting just about 97%. And finally, we're going to do 70. We're expected to get 99.9% .9 of the time, we're going to have at least two matching birthdays. We are getting 99.9 .9 some percent. It's crazy that going from uh, 23 people, which is about 50%, just adding seven more people goes up to 70%. And then adding 10 more people, it goes up to 89%. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any comments about this, please put them down below. Or if you have a better way or a simpler way of executing this program, and I would love to see how you would do this. Thank you for watching.